It was always wandering away and I couldn't do anything to stop it. I found her where I left her, on the toilet, about two hours later. Alguna vez, él casi quemó la casa. Dejó la estufa encendida. She asked me a question. Then she asked me the same question. Then the same question again. And then she gets upset because I get frustrated. And I'm just sleep deprived. I'm overwhelmed. I'm like, ah, oh, I can't get any rest. I can't get any rest. When is this going to stop? When is this going to stop? If you're caring for a person with dementia at home, your patience, creativity, knowledge, and skills can be challenged on a daily basis. Managing both your needs and those of a person who can no longer take care of him or herself is hard, so it's very important for you to look for and review ways to keep you both healthy and safe at home. You, okay? you are caring for him or her at home for any number of reasons. But although there are familiar and comfortable aspects to doing this, keep in mind that your loved one's memory, judgment, mood, and behavior can quickly change. And these changes can become more frequent and longer lasting as the dementia process advances. Medical and health care professionals sometimes refer to stages of dementia as a way to determine where a person may be in the dementia process. The symptoms in these stages of dementia sometimes overlap or may not occur at all as a person's condition changes. In this video, we'll focus on caring for people with middle to later stages of dementia. In the middle stages of dementia, people may have more trouble completing routine chores such as cooking and laundry. They may forget the names of things. They may ignore or withdraw from what's going on around them. They may become more quiet or angry or nervous, especially in situations that are new or not understood or not part of a daily routine. And they may refuse your help or your attempts to change their behavior. In the more advanced stages of dementia, you may need to provide more assistance with very simple day-to-day -day activities. People in these later stages may forget to eat regular meals and may lose weight. Dehydration can also result from not getting enough fluids. Some people with dementia are wanderers at heart, so they get into areas of the house that are unsafe, or they may try to leave the house and wander away. Some people like to sit, and when they sit in one place for a long time, they can become stiff and weak, and then they have trouble getting up. Ordinary objects and places in the home may become unnoticed or invisible, or even frightening. When these things happen, you and the person you are caring for may need specialized help from professionals who can give you additional advice. A common concern for older people is falling. One in three people who are 65 years or older and living at home fall each year, and the frequency and risk of falling increases with each decade thereafter. Preventing falls should be part of any home safety plan, but beyond falls, you should also consider keeping your home safe from burns or scalds, from fire or hot water, overdosing or poisoning from ingesting medications, cleaning fluids, or spoiled food, and overexposure to hot or cold environments. So how can you, the caregiver, do this? it's a lot easier to change your surroundings than it is to change another person's behavior. So let's start to think about how accidents can be prevented in the first place. To better understand why people act the way they do, some healthcare professionals use what is called the ABC approach, which stands for Antecedent Behavior Consequence. The antecedent is the situation that occurs to cause the behavior the behavior is the action that occurs as a result of the situation or antecedent. The consequence is what occurs as a result of the situation and behavior. In this video, we'll look at ABC scenarios in different rooms in a home. We'll identify some safety hazards and we'll show you how you might address some unsafe behaviors in people with dementia. Since many dangerous accidents can occur in the kitchen, we'll begin there. Just as you can become frustrated when you're not successful, so can a person with dementia. Opening and rummaging through drawers can become an unsafe activity for a frustrated person with dementia, especially in rooms like the kitchen. 
Here in the kitchen, the antecedent is the drawer overflowing with sharp and pointed kitchen items. The behavior is rummaging through a drawer and becoming increasingly frustrated and more aggressive. And the consequences of this activity could be a cut or injured hand and clutter on the floor that could cause someone to trip and fall. Solutions to this situation could be to remove sharp and pointed items like knives, scissors, and cheese graters. Organize the drawer's remaining contents so there are only a few safe items. And install safety locks on drawers and cabinets to prevent access in the first place. Here's another kitchen scenario for you to consider. Let's imagine that the person you're caring for walks over to the stove, turns the stove on, puts a pot on the burner, and wanders away. The antecedent here is the accessibility and the potential for using the stove. The behavior here is turning on the stove and wandering away. And the consequence is a possible fire hazard from a burning pot, or a possible explosion from the resulting accumulation of gas in the room. An easy solution is to remove or cover up the stove's knobs. Or if it's an electric stove, unplug it and use plastic outlet covers in nearby wall sockets to make it more difficult to plug the stove back in. In general, you should be cautious about leaving a person in the middle and later stages of dementia unsupervised in any room in the house. For like the kitchen, other rooms can be unsafe too. In this scene, a person with dementia is looking through the contents of the medicine cabinet. He singles out a bottle, opens it up, and takes one or more pills. The antecedent here is an accessible medicine cabinet full of medications. The behavior is ingesting the medications, and the consequence is a possible overdose, choking, or serious complications from taking a harmful combination of drugs. As a solution, you may want to lock the medicine cabinet or put all medications, razors, soaps, and cleansers in a locked cabinet, drawer, or toolbox. Another common bathroom situation could take place when you are sleeping. An older person goes to the bathroom at night, but because of stiff knees, weak legs, and balance difficulties, this person has a hard time safely getting up off the toilet seat. The antecedent here is the bathroom toilet that is low and without adequate hand support to help with standing up. The behavior is the lack of physical ability to stand up, especially after sitting for a while and the consequence is possibly falling off the toilet or being stuck on the toilet for hours until help arrives. An elevated toilet seat or portable commode placed over the toilet along with accessible grab bars or handrails may make it easier for the person to stand up more easily. Alarm devices can be helpful. Consider a bell strategically placed on a bedroom or bathroom door. Additional bathroom changes to consider for the tub or shower area are adding a shower chair or tub bench, grab bars, and non-skid mats for an easier and safer time when bathing. For a person with dementia, the shape of a toilet, sink, and bathtub, as well as the space on the floor itself, may become confusing or even frightening. If the toilet, sink, and bathroom floor are the same color, they may not be clearly visible to someone with dementia. In fact, the toilet bowl may appear to be a big hole in the floor. Proper lighting and use of contrasting colors can help better define the toilet space. Strategically placed and clearly written signs can sometimes help people with dementia understand where things are located, what they are for, and where they should go. The bedroom and living room areas are also places where accidents can occur. In this scenario, it's nighttime and the person you are caring for is lying in bed in a darkened bedroom. He has pulled the covers up to his chin and seems terrified. Visual hallucinations are not uncommon and a pile of blankets on the floor may look scary to a person with dementia especially when combined with strange, muffled noises coming from the TV in the next room. Help! Help! 
The antecedent situation here is a pile of blankets on the floor, unfamiliar sounds, and a dark or dimly lit bedroom that accentuates shadows and textures. The screams or call for help is the behavior, and the consequence is a person who is anxious and unable to sleep, confused, and at a higher risk for falling out of bed. How are you doing, Jimmy? You okay? Possible solutions you could try to improve this situation could be turn on the light and provide friendly companionship, install a night light in the bedroom, move extra piles of clothes and blankets out of sight, and turn the TV volume down or off. Still in the bedroom, the next scenario looks at how getting up in the morning can become frustrating for everyone. A person with dementia may not want you to remove the blankets or to pull him out of bed. He may not easily accept your help even after he struggles and exhausts himself trying to get up on his own. In this scenario, the antecedent is the bed and bed covers. The behavior is the exhausting struggle to get out of bed. The consequence is frustration, possible muscle strain from overuse, and increased risk of falling out of bed. Possible solutions here are keeping the blankets loose and not tightly tucked down, installing a grab bar or placing a sturdy chair by the head of the bed to provide better leverage when getting up, placing an alarm or monitoring device on or near the bed and plan to take him or her to the bathroom during the night. The living room is another place where the person in your care may spend a lot of time during the day and night, so it's also another room where accidents can occur. In this living room scenario, the person with dementia is sitting in his armchair in front of the TV, but he's not looking at the TV. His eyes are fixed on the ceiling. He may be having a visual hallucination. The textured ceiling might look like there are bugs up there. The antecedent situation here is inadequate light in the room that may accentuate shadows and textures. The behavior is the hallucinations and fear brought on by his limited vision and understanding. The consequence may be trying to escape and falling, increased confusion, and having more negative feelings. Your immediate solution could be to add more light to the living room, which may help to more realistically define the room's objects and surface patterns. Now, still in the living room, let's look at another ABC situation. You see he's trying, but he cannot easily get up and out of the chair. Now, the antecedent is a low or plush armchair that almost engulfs whoever sits in it. As a result, the behavior you see is his exhausting struggle to get out of the chair. And the consequence could be a number of things. Frustration, muscle strain, having a toileting accident in the chair, or falling. The solution may be to replace this armchair with one that is taller and firmer for better leverage. Again, lack of clutter is important. Rearrange furniture and clear walkways to simplify the room's layout. Remove electric cords, throw rugs, household knickknacks and other obstacles so the person can move around more freely and with less confusion or agitation. Hallways in the home link one room to another, but for people with dementia they can have difficulty understanding where they are and what they should do next. A darkened hallway should not be overlooked as a safety hazard. In this scenario, it's the middle of the night, and the person you are caring for has gotten out of bed and is in the hallway, perhaps looking for the bathroom. He's confused and appears to be in some distress. After a while, he walks to a corner to relieve himself. The darkened hallway is the antecedent in this case. The behavior is this person urinating in the hallway. And the consequence may be increased confusion and anxiety, becoming very cold and tired from being in wet clothing and not knowing what to do next. 
If the person you are caring for likes to wander to other parts of the house unassisted, especially at night, then consider these solutions. Proper lighting such as hallway night lights, contrasting tape on doorway thresholds, and bells and locks to front and back doors. Stairways are a common site for serious accidents. It's important that you assess and periodically reassess whether a person with dementia should or should not be using your home stairway. In this scenario, the person you are caring for gains access to the stairway when you are elsewhere. As he starts down the stairs, he misjudges the next step, loses his balance, and falls. The antecedent is the wide stairway with only one handrail not easily accessible. The behavior is that he does not see the next step down and he is not able to use the handrail. The consequence is a fall down the stairs and the possibility of a serious injury. The solution in this scenario is to make sure that the stairway, like other areas of your home, is well lit, has accessible handrails, and the edges of the steps are defined by contrast tape. For this situation, motion sensor lighting may be helpful when the light switch is not noticed or forgotten. Clutter-free steps and stairways also will lessen the risk of tripping and falling. If the person you are caring for cannot or should not use the stairway unassisted, block the stairs with a gate or rope and add an additional visual reminder like a clearly written sign. Or if there's a door to the stairway in your house, always keep it locked. Hopefully these various home scenarios have provided you with useful information and a method to analyze what you can do to make your home safe for everyone. Some general rules that should apply to everyone are avoid clutter, add grab bars or railings, remove small rugs or torn rug, consider the brightness in your home, check the batteries in your smoke detector, gather up all the medications in the house and keep them in one safe place, consider installing home safety equipment such as motion sensors or alarms. If you're still feeling overwhelmed, then you and the one you're caring for may need additional support from others who can provide caregiving assistance and offer professional guidance about keeping your home safe. Many people in your community can help you. Home safety experts in your area may be physical therapists, occupational therapists, social workers, and nurses. As a final note, remember that it's very difficult to predict what a person with dementia might do. So be proactive in checking your home. Try to take control of potential hazardous situations before they occur. It's easier to change your environment than to change a person's behavior. With a safer home, the person you are caring for can be active, engaged, and content. And you